Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. So, Lake 2 has just been dropped by Brianna from Four Paws and a Book. So, we are going to watch that and pick our next book. I'm listening to it so on my headphones so you won't be able to hear it. But we're in Argentina now. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. Buenos Aires, Argentina. Okay, so Buenos Aires is known for is known for tango. So you have to read a book with two points of view, and it has to be exactly two points of view because, you know, two it takes two to tango. So I will probably be picking my book a little bit later, but not starting it till tomorrow. Okay, so I thought about it for a while and I almost went with a romance, but I really want to surprise myself and actually finish my TBR for Camp Nightmare. So I'm going to start uh, The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. Apparently it is dual perspectives. It goes between sisters Farron and Alara. Alara. Uh, I'm going to listen to the audiobook, so if I mispronounce either of their names, I'm sorry. I will update it later. Uh, I want to edit my first reading vlog and get that up. So I'm going to see if the girls from Camp Nightmare uh, are still sprinting. And if they are, then I think I'm going to start editing this vlog, like on this card. And then uh, I will start the Rachel Price book <laughs> tomorrow. I own it digitally. If I like it enough, then I do want to buy it. But I'm trying really hard not to... I mean, I have an extensive TBR, so I'm not trying really hard not to buy books, but I am trying really hard to be mindful of the books that I buy, and if I buy a book, then more than likely I think I'm going to love it, and it's going to, I think it's going to be part of my permanent collection. Am I always right? No. But <laughs> I am trying to be more mindful. So if I editing Alita popping in to say uh, that Alita's real funny because she said she's going to be more mindful of the books that she buys and then she went to Barnes and Noble and bought eight books and also went to Bookman's and I mean she did pretty good there she only got like two books but you know anyways the girl that's going to be mindful of the books that she buys just bought like 14 books probably <laughs> night I started listening to the Rachel Price book um by Holly Jackson her newest release and I just wasn't vibing with that audiobook so I don't know if I want to <laughs> get obtain a physical copy from like the library or something and try to read that one physically with my eyes but I do know <laughs> that I mean the audiobook is like 17 hours or 16 hours and 50 minutes so 17 hours practically so I'm assuming that's gonna be like a big chunker uh <clears throat> so for right now I'm gonna put the dis the reappearance of Rachel Price on back burner I do want to read it eventually but I just wasn't vibing with the audiobook last night so instead, 
I started When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole, which I guess this, I guess June is going to be my month of rereads because I read this like three years ago and at the time I thought it was fine, but I thought it was like a romantic, like a very lackluster romance, but people are like, no, it's, it's terrifying. So I want to give it another shot. Plus Alyssa Cole is pansexual uh she is married to a man but she's bi and she identifies as pansexual so that will work for pride month and it's extra points on the second leg of the re uh, amazing read up on so i started this i got to chapter two so i'm not very far into it but you follow from sydney's perspective and you follow from theo's perspective clearly i haven't gone to theo's perspective yet because i've only read the first chapter but i am enjoying it so far it's just about this neighborhood in New York that's changing. pages into when no one is watching by Alyssa Cole and like <sighs> I don't know what I was thinking the first time I read this when I said that it's just a really slow romance it is a very slow ominous thriller that has scary things happening. Would I consider this a horror novel yet? No. But it is a terrifying thriller. Because like, oh, this neighborhood is changing and you follow Sydney who is a colored woman in her neighborhood and this neighborhood used to be full of other colored people but they have been pushing like the white people have been pushing them out which is so disheartening so sad so terrifying for some of the things that she's had to go through in her own neighborhood in her own home like how can anyone feel safe with some of the things that are happening here and it just it's making me so sad so I full-heartedly believe that this is going to be a five star this time the first time i read it like i said i thought it was fine but we're not even going to talk about that uh this is terrifying like have you ever had to go in an uber and the driver locks the doors as soon as you sit down and then he's like oh no, no no it's okay it's just the automatic doors and then he goes the wrong way to take you where you want to go and he's like no, no 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 there's traffic like i'm sorry but if i'm in the back of an uber by myself first off i always share my location with my husband when on the chance that i take a uber or a lyft by myself 
I always share that stuff with my husband. That way, if I go missing or anything like that, then he has my location. And I always text him uh, when I get to wherever I'm going. So, like, if I'm taking an Uber home from school or from work, then I can be like, okay, I'm sharing my location with you as soon as the Uber driver gets to pick me up. And then as soon as I get home, I'm like, hey, I'm home. We're good. Um, and like, that's my norm, but it's really weird to think that like, that doesn't have to be your norm. Like, I do it because I'm a female and like, I don't know. It's just, I've heard so many scary stories about riding in an Uber or a Lyft by yourself, especially as a woman. And like, I don't know. That's, it's sad that that thought has to go in my mind, but I, I'm trying to put myself in Sydney's perspective because she's not only a woman, but she's also uh, an African American and in a neighborhood that clearly is trying to push her out. And it's just, it's very disheartening. It's very sad. It's very sickening. Uh, I don't really have any other thoughts on this book right now, but I'm sorry that I called it a romance. <laughs> it's not. There are some really terrifying scenes in here, but I would classify this more as a thriller, not a horror novel, although there are very ominous, slow scenes that are scary. If you were in that situation, you would be scared. Okay, fine. If I were in that situation, I would be scared. I won't speak for you. So I'm going to go out for a little bit today. I used to like take the bus to just random places and walk around and hang out and explore or just walk and see what's around me and just it, kind of explore a little bit and I haven't done that in a while. So I think for our summertime activity for today, I'm just gonna go out. I don't know if I'm gonna take the bus or...
Hey friends. So it is like 10 o'clock at night on Tuesday night. Uh, you did see me. I haven't really talked to you, but you did see me go out. Uh, I took a bus to a random spot in the city and then I kind of explored. I ended up going to family dollar and buying some fidget stuff which I still have to show my husband I haven't I forgot uh because when he got off work uh his brothers had taken me to get coffee and then we went to bookman's and then we went to a couple of craft uh comic book stores and uh record store so we had a long day but i did just finish when no one is watching by Alyssa cole this is the second time that i've read this book and the first time i didn't love it but i don't know what past alita was thinking because this was terrifying and so addictive it it's more of a thriller not a horror novel in my opinion i think it's a thriller that has terrifying stuff that happens but basically you follow sydney who is in this neighborhood in new york that is slowly changing and uh it's really about racism and all the white folks basically trying to push her out because she's not white and it was like i'm sorry but if i was going on or in an uber and like the driver like locked me in and then started going a different way than the location that i was going that would be terrifying and it was really really good i highly recommend it i think i'm gonna give it four stars because it wasn't perfect but it is one that i want to keep on my bookshelf for my collection so i did like that we're gonna quickly update our bingo board and then i'm gonna show you the haul that i got earlier so i think we have to add fill day is do a summer activity and I feel like I did some summary things today. You know, went out in the world, was not a stranger tomorrow. I actually have work, so from home, but still. Sometimes it's harder when it's at home. Bonfire night is red right on the cover. I still don't have that, but I do need to find a prompt for when no one is watching so buddy read we already did nature on the cover i mean that's a building oh but if you look up here there's like greenery that could count for nature on the cover maybe i will do that i'm seeing if there's anything else that it counts for Ooh, was this the book that I got for the scavenger hunt, though? I think this might have been the book I got for the scavenger hunt. So I am actually going to go check real quick if this is the book that I got for the scavenger hunt. And if it is, then that's what we're going to read it for. Let's see. That's nature on the cover. That's audiobook. So audiobook was right here. Okay, the next one is scavenger hunt so let's see oh you know what i might have just skipped and gone all the way to the end of the scavenger hunt oh okay just kidding okay the scavenger hunt was when no one is watching so we are going to cross off scavenger hunt so this is what my bingo board is looking like i need to read bonfire night which is to read a book with red on the cover so maybe tomorrow i'll put i'll pick a book that has red on the cover and then i can get my first bingo i am trying to do a blackout though so we'll see how that works tomorrow i also work all day like i said but i'm gonna quickly go through 
I found some graphic novels. So the first one is a scary one called The Closet. I had never heard of it until seeing it at the comic book store. But it looks like it follows this boy who has like monsters in his closet or he's afraid of the closet for some reason. And yeah. There are monsters in the bedroom closet, but dad doesn't exactly believe him. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, okay. Then I got the first two issues of Fables. So I have already read Legends in Exile, but it's been so many years that I want to reread it. And then the second one is Animal Farm. These are really just these novels about like think fairy tales but they get trapped in our world and then you have to use your different clues as to who is what character like you encounter Snow White, the big bad wolf, think, uh, people of that nature so I'm pretty excited for that one. Then I have the first two books of Lock and Key. This is a really dark horror story collection. Um, this is Lock and Key on Netflix. And I have watched the first season on Netflix. I don't know if there's going to be more. Uh, but there's like head games and then welcome to lovecraft and it's just basically like this haunted mansion type story so this family moves to lovecraft which is the name of this manor after their dad slash the husband dies and they basically are going there to save money and it's like where dad grew up and they just want to be closer to him but now like haunting things are happening and it's really horrific and a little bit of fantasy and just really really addictive so I'm excited to read these but also a little scared because they are very gory and the last series that I got I know series who is she anyways the last series that I wanted to start was Archie volume one and Archie volume two so this is just you know everyone knows Archie right I hope so uh there's also Jughead and he turns into a vampire and stuff I want to get that series eventually too but this was a nice little graphic novel haul I'm very excited for all of them and uh, it does mean that now I have two four six seven <laughs> now I have seven books to add to my uh, 2024 hauled books the books I hauled in 2024 I was supposed to read 70% of those and I don't think I'm anywhere near that but we'll worry about good morning that. friends so I have decided that I'm gonna read the closet by these four different authors um it is mostly red on the cover and honestly you only have to have a little bit of red to count it but this will be for bonfire nights uh it will count for the last one that I need for a bingo in Camp Nightmare and I don't remember what the rule is in the Amazing Readathon for graphic novels so I might not count it for a graphic novel or for the Amazing Readathon but I am gonna sit here and bust this out and then I have professional development the rest of the day so this probably pretty much the only time you're gonna see me I will see I know I'm gonna have like an hour lunch break so we'll see if I film then or not but then I also have to send off some stuff for Pango and uh, 
Maybe I'll do some more reading a little bit later, but I'm gonna get my first bingo. I am going for a blackout, so. So my class is about to start. I have like 15 minutes, but I finished the closet by, oh, okay, let's see. By James Tinian, Gavin Fullerton, Chris O'Harlan, Tom Napoleon, Napolitona, sorry, and Dylan Todd and Greg Locklear. Uh, so this is a very dark horror graphic novel. And you follow this kid who in New York is afraid of, the dad thinks that he's afraid of the closet, but he's afraid of the monster that comes out of the closet. So it's like childhood fears to the maximum. Uh, I was definitely one of those kids. I always thought that the monsters were under the bed, not so much in my closet, but sometimes, I guess, in the closet. You know, it just depended on the day. But this is a four-year-old little boy who's afraid of the closet because there's a monster that comes out and haunts him. And you get a lot of backstory about... Uh, this broken marriage between Maggie and Tom who are uh, constantly fighting before they move across the country and then they move from New York City to Portland Oregon which was kind of cool but this like their road trip and their cross country road trip to move but more than that it's just about like childhood fears and it was it was good I really enjoyed it it was dark though I think that I would have liked it better if there was a little bit less cussing I'm not I don't really like cussing I I think you do you boo but for me I didn't love that part I don't know if I want to give this a four or a five star. A five star? Yeah, okay, we'll do that. Which means that a bonfire night 
is going to be marked off. I'm going to take a picture of my bingo board and put it on Instagram. And then I'm going to clean off my desk so that I have a work area because I have professional development from home all day. So I just got to get comfortable. Um, Alright, lunch break is ending. And I found out that the graphic novel that I read earlier can count for a sightseeing prompt. So I did have it count for a sightseeing prompt. I have like five minutes before I have to go back to, from lunch. So my Zoom is open right over here. You can't see it and I'm not going to show you. But... <laughs> You know, for privacy reasons. Um, but leg two has a detour. So let's see. I'm gonna wear my headphones so you're probably not gonna hear it, but that's I mean, maybe I could just have it do. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just listen and then I can show you. Okay. There we go. So we have a couple minutes. Okay, so I have to f shout out to my favorite bookstore. So I'm gonna shout out Bookman's, I think East Side. Uh, I got some <laughs> graphic novels from them yesterday, so I will just hold them up. I will take a picture. And I'll say, oh, this is my haul from Bookman's, blah, blah, blah. So I had the first two Archies and the first two Lock and Keys. This is our last reading sprint. Uh, I was here earlier and then I had to go, like, send my Pingo books and do some things, run all the errands. But I'm back and I need to start my next book. So I have... Uh, I'm listening to the omniance, but I have This Is Where We Talk Things Out by Caitlin Mariko. It's a dark lit press book. I have it on Kindle. So I'm probably just going to read this real quick because it's fairly short. And it'll get me bonus points on the Amazing Readathon because it is one of Lexi's favorites. And Lexi is the team captain for the spooky team, which I am a part of. So I'm just gonna listen or read this. Maybe I can get the audiobook too, but it's on my Kindle right now. So I'm probably just gonna read it on the computer. Ooh, the audiobook is free. I might I might listen. It's two hours long for the audiobook so it says this is where we talk things out um follows the gut-wrenching journey of miller and her estranged mom sylvie who had always had a tense relationship after miller's father dies she agrees to a girl's vacation away from the city to reconnect with the only family she has left. Although she's eager to make sure, make things work, Miller can't help but worry that her mom is seeing the countryside retreat as a fun weekend getaway instead of what it really is, a last-ditch effort to repair their relationship. Unfortunately, that quickly becomes the least of Miller's problems. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read this. I'm probably going to listen, like I said.
Uh, I have not filled out my bingo board today. That's not true. I filled out my bingo board this morning after finishing the graphic novel. And that got me my first bingo. So I'm just going to like put a line through that. Like I said, I'm trying real hard to get a blackout. So I just, I mean, I finished. We need to talk through things or... This is where we talk things out. That's what it's called. Uh, like I said, it was super intense and really... It just went from nothing, like negative nothing. I was real bored being inside one person's head. And I'm like, I don't even know her. I don't know if I can trust her. And then like, whoosh. And things were just... It was so unhinged. And I liked it. But I need to find, well, I don't need to, but I want to find a prompt for this is where we talk things out on the bingo board. Like, I found one for sightseeing on the Amazing Readathon, but I would like to also mark it off the bingo board. So, nature on the cover. Ooh, it is like there's a cabin. And there's trees, and there's snow. It's very iso- Ooh, I think there's isolated on here, too. Book with urban legends, authority. Okay, so remote location, isolation, isolation, destination. Yes. Ooh, night sky on the cover. There's a bit of a night sky. Ooh, okay. So let's see what remote- location would oh, mean that I only need one more to get a second bingo okay there's also stargazing which is the night sky I would say it's more of a remote location uh <laughs> I've been doing reading sprints with Nikki and Dana on from Camp Nightmare and uh I've been on their like thrills and chills thing doing reading sprints so Nikki and I are going to buddy read forever and ever by Lucy Squar. this is technically my third book by this author the first one I loved so much the second one I didn't like at all so this will tell me if I like Lucy Squar or not I also have to give the for the Two books that I've already read by Lucy Score a second chance because of Nikki um, because she it's the knock em out series I read the first two in that series loved the first one hated the second one and was going to not finish that series but I promised Nikki that I would try that one so eventually probably not in June because I'm doing all the things in June uh, but I tabbed it and so it's like eight days to finish this chunker I'm really nervous I might try and get the audiobook because uh, yeah but it's like over 500 pages it's it's a brick it's 561 pages and basically we divided it into s approximately 70 pages per chunk. Some of them are a little bit shorter, some are a little bit longer based on where the chapters end and everything. But I am probably going to go to bed and uh, get a snack, go to bed, you know. So I will see you in the morning, probably, or tomorrow, at some point. Good morning. No, I'm just kidding. I've been up for a while, but you haven't seen me yet. Uh, it's the morning of the sixth. The sixth. Is it the sixth? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, I was mentioned in a story. Hold up. Cool. We have a bingo. Cool. Um, sorry. That was awesome. But. I read Rolling in the Deep last night 
not by Adele part. I mean, not by Adele. Rolling in the deep. No. Um, <laughs> Rolling in the deep <laughs> by Mary Grant. This book. And I have yet to put it on my bingo board. It was a novella. And, okay, hold on. Okay, uh, Into the Turning Deep by Mira Grant was Bree's recommendation for the spooky team for Amazing Readathon. And I love this book. I've already read it. I, I read it a couple of years ago at this point. Maybe there will be a reread in June. In, I almost said May. In June of this because I really did love it. It's a horror novel about killer mermaids. That's all you need to know. So, uh, Rolling in the Deep by Mary Grant is actually the first in the series. I didn't realize it was a series, but it's a prequel to Into the Drowning Deep. And the whole premise of Into the Drowning Deep is that this team of scientists go onto this mission on this cruise or on the ship to find proof of mermaids and some people are like oh that's crazy don't do that that's stupid this is like 10 years after the fact of that uh expedition when our main character had her sister was part of that crew like 10 or 15 years before and now the prequel is that story of what happened 10 or 15 years before so this takes place a little bit later and the sister of Victoria I don't remember names because I haven't read this one in a while. Victoria's sister uh, went missing so she wanted to go back to where her sister was last seen which is you know in the middle of the ocean and uh, absolutely love this cover absolutely I, I really like this cover too but I want to figure out where this cover where this book can fit on my bingo board I already submitted it for points on the amazing readathon because it's like 600 points because it's 500 points because Brie read it and gave it five stars plus 100 points for LGBT plus it's spooky so it's actually like 700 points which is crazy but here I'm just gonna kind of go through these I'm gonna keep this up and you can see and tell me if it counts so I know I was looking for star using which I think is night sky on the cover which is definitely not that but let's just start at number three and go so I'm gonna start at the top and go down so nature walk nature on the cover I mean it's in the water but I think there's a water prompt if I remember correctly uh, first time campers read a YA that's definitely not a YA campfire stories book with urban legends I mean I could stretch that and say that mermaids are urban legends but I don't think that that's entirely well where's campfire no I don't think that that's entirely true camp counselor authority position I mean there was a power dynamic between the scientist that was in charge of the all the scientists and the ship um crew like the 
the pilot, the crew pilot, or the ship pilot. Like, there was a power dynamic. There was a power struggle there. So, I mean, that could work. Where's camp counselor? I mean, then I would only be one away. Okay, let's keep looking. Uh, mess hall. Food on the cover. You know... This cover is actually a human, like there's, so there are these actresses that are dressed up as mermaids, but in this, one of the people in the water was supposed to be going for a swim, and then you see how there's like that fin or that thing grabbing onto her? Well, that is the killer mermaid that is going to eat her. So, I mean, that, I'm stretching Mess Hall, but that could work. I had a real hard time finding a uh, prom or a book to fit that prompt for me, uh, because I was trying to stick with just spooky books, and I couldn't find any. I mean, I found, I know I have that Christina Henry one that says restaurant and lunch, but I'm kind of feeling mess hall. Let's see what else there is. Night sky, absolutely not. Favorite color, no. There's no purple on that cover. Carney love, there's no carnival <laughs> here. Romantic suspense, which I kind of put domestic thriller on there because I don't have a lot of romantic suspense. So if I can't find a romantic suspense, I'm going to do a domestic thriller. Sorry. <laughs> um... Dual timeline? Nope. Water on the cover? Okay, there's definitely water. Unreliable narrator? Uh, not really. Or a friend group? I wouldn't consider them friends, though. They're, like, more, like, colleagues. So, let me see where water on the cover is. Oh. Day on the lake. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna stretch this prompt, and I'm going to use mess ball because that's a person in the water and the mermaid is eating her. Alive. Like, get, well, okay, she's probably gonna kill, the mermaid's gonna kill her and then eat her. Right? I mean, they never found the body, so I'm kind of assuming some things here, but, oh well, that's fine. So, that does mean that I am one away from another bingo at Camp Counselor and Stargazing. So Camp Counselor is a, a person of authority, reading like an authority figure. I think I had a nanny book picked out for that, but you know... I've been kind of going rogue anyway. And then there's also stargazing, so night sky on the cover. I don't know what I'm going to read next. Uh, I have some foster parent college homework to finish, and I'm really feeling inspired to go back to that and finish it. It's due on Monday, and it's Thursday. So, I'm just really gonna sit down and finish that, basically. So, I'm trying to get certified to become a foster parent. And our homework this week is to read about this case. I'm not gonna give you specifics, but uh, she's having some behavior problems. And our job is to... Uh, go through each thing that uh, each different perspective uh, like her birth mom herself her foster mom her teacher and all the different people and then you have to kind of go into their mind and try and figure out different ways to help with some of the behaviors that you're seeing with her so I'm gonna go finish that so that I don't have to worry about it over the weekend and then I'll finish maybe I'll try and get a second a second
second one. So if I get Camp Counselor, it'll be this way. If I get Stargazing, it'll be this way. So I don't know which one I'm going to pick, but I'll pick one of those a little bit later. Okay, I did not want to update you because I don't even think that you know that I started reading Never Have I Ever. Uh, I've been reading this for like five days and I'm still less than 150 pages into it. Uh, I'm not liking this, so I'm going to DNF it. I know. I haven't checked yet, but I'm guessing that for the amazing readathon that our next prompt got dropped between the time I went to sleep and the time I woke up today. Uh, so I'm assuming that my this this vlog is probably gonna be over, but I bought, I mean, I sold a book on Pingo Books yesterday, so I am looking for that book so that this afternoon I can go uh, I can go send it off. So it's the full body fix. It's right here. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to start my last load of laundry today. And yesterday I didn't really read. I just watched some Fosters uh, in the afternoon and caught up on like foster parent classes. I had a couple of videos to watch and things. So, and then I cleaned up some of my room. Uh, so it looks really nice. Uh, I do need to do another load of laundry. So I'm probably going to get that started. And then we're going to go see if the next prompt dropped or not. Okay, so I just checked and the Amazing Readathon does have the next prompt. So I'm going to finish this vlog right now. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching this vlog. I feel like this one wasn't a whole lot of reading. I mean, we got our prompt for the Amazing Readathon. We read our book. We enjoyed it. But uh, I feel like there was a lot more reading in leg one of the Amazing Readathon. But I feel like if 
I'm daily vlogging that that's gonna kind of be how it is some videos are gonna be like read 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 others are gonna be more chatty and some are just gonna be not as much footage so I hope you enjoyed this one don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel if you're new around here I were in that situation I would be scared I won't speak for you